I'm, I, I absolutely loved the clarity of the vision you presented, um, but I am a little worried about the only thing that you presented as a possible alternative to this sort of dystopian narrative, uh, which is having a two-way mirror. Sure. But I don't see how that actually creates that, that buffer zone that you were talking about that no, we I all agree. need for innovation. So I preferred the thing that Pat said about that, yes, all this information is out there. Yes, we have all these algorithms and capacities, but we, what, this is a specific remedi uh, remediation. It's just having the government um, or uh, uh, the European Union now is talking about having government panels, over overseers, that can sue on behalf of, of, uh, of citizens when there's evidence that, that data is being used inappropriately. So I think we have to have something that protects that buffer, yeah. not, uh, not no, just I absolutely a two-way mirror. So that, I wasn't pre um, attempting to present my exhaustive solution. Okay. <laughs> I was right. just trying to um, point out that we could imagine these systems working differently. My personal view is I completely agree with you that we cannot rely on individual action to remedy some of the problems, that we need a more powerful institutional overseeing mechanism that can ensure impropriety doesn't occur of the kind that you're talking about. Right. But the main, my main, that, is one of my, that was my sub-point. My main point is that the two-way mirror doesn't give you back your zone. No. Okay. I mean, so, the, so I liked the idea of protecting yeah. how, how information is used yeah. more than, than you know, I, it's nice to see with others. I agree with you. It'd be nice. Yeah. And I think we do have more of that than you kind of indicate. We are getting a lot of information about when, when governments are being unfair and things like yeah. that. I mean, I, I guess personally, I think I'm with you. I suppose I, I was using that illustration to suggest how we could imagine how it might be different. Okay. But personally, I quite like to go back to the old, you know, the old days when, when people didn't know very much about me at all. <laughs> Thank you for your talk and thank you for all the thought that you put into it. It was very thoughtful. So I just wanted to clarify something and I do apologize if I was unclear. I, I really don't agree with the idea of algorithmic prisons. I don't, um, it's just not my viewpoint. I, I really want a different world where we are using the technology um, and finding ways to work within that structure. Um, I believe we have to find um, very creative ways of protecting autonomy. But um, I, I would be very very reluctant to ever meet, for example, with a policymaker to discuss how to regulate algorithms. I would be horrified. I would really encourage them to to not go that direction. I, I would like to see, for example, um, again, I would like to see a, a room uh, of experts having a discussion of uh, the data uses and some of the other things I talked about where the, the, the tension points of the regulation, but um, I just wanted to clarify that. I, I didn't want any misunderstanding. It's a really, a really important point. Um, to not demonize, um, you know, algorithms per se. It's such a big topic. But anyhow, that's just my viewpoint. But I, I thank you for yours and, and thank you for your talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, I, I didn't mean to demonize algorithms. As, I mean, yeah. there's, not, there's nothing demonic about an algorithm. It's the, the fact that the insight that they generate may be utilized to make adverse decisions about someone for which there is no recourse. So it's the application of the insight generated from the the algorithm in a specific context that's potentially problematic. So I didn't mean to suggest that there's anything evil about algorithms. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, thank yeah, you so course, much. Thank you. So going back to the two-way mirror thing that you mentioned, so in some sense we have a live experiment going on of how these two-way mirrors can exist. We have, for example, systems like, uh, at least if you think of things like Yelp, you think like TripAdvisor, you think like Amazon, in principle, they are supposed to provide the reverse lens where consumers can evaluate, say, the entities that, that, they're, that they're using and get a sort of a flip. However, in the case of both Yelp and TripAdvisor, what we know is that they've now been co-opted by the entities that they're evaluating. In the case of Amazon, on the other hand, it's not as clear. It, it, may, it may be possible that you're actually getting better information from a consumer's point of view about the services that an entity is providing to you. So. In, in, in a sense, there, there, are the, there is an attempt to get this mirror back. There, is, there are ways in which it's not working. There are some ways in which it is working. You could imagine sort of the, some, a, a version of Yelp for local government, except that you don't have choice for these things. But I think it would be interesting to sort of go to the next step and say, okay, under what conditions can you make these backwards mirrors actually work in these games? I'm sort of interested. In, in what sense is Amazon working as a two-way mirror? Well, in, I mean, only in the sense that, you know, um, from the point of view, so again, I think you were framing this more in terms of the state versus the individual, but in terms of evaluating in a more corporate sense or right, evaluating entities yeah. that are providing you services, you do get sort of consumer facing sort of review systems for doing these things, but just like the way Yelp does and just the way the other systems do. 
So I guess maybe I'm misinterpreting what you meant by the yeah, two-way sorry. mirror. Yeah, sorry. So I, I could just imagine. So apparently, you know, my boss is monitoring me with all these CCTV cameras and how right. often I'm using my computer, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I'd quite like to know what executive management are doing. <laughs> right. But I, I don't have access to that kind of data. That's what I mean by the two-way mirror, so that this would rectify some sure, of the Sure, but, but even then you can, even things like Glassdoor, for example, are again providing you, if not the, the direct level of what exactly is my boss seeing about me, it's more like how are these companies treating their employees in, in a Absolutely. more general sense. And you do, and there is a bit yeah. of that attempting right. to oh, go on as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I didn't know about that application. So I wanted to discuss explainability for a minute mm -hmm. because I think it's important to understand that there's a technical issue there in the sense that the trends in machine learning are actually towards less explainable yeah, models. Yeah, I, I gather that. And this is a technical issue, not a legal issue, so it cannot be solved legally. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's important if you want to think about explainability to think about black box forms of explainability, describing, for example, the objective that an algorithm optimizes towards, mm -hmm. or which inputs can go into it, or, or things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, other approaches where you demand that people understand exactly what the algorithm is doing seemed completely doomed to failure in the long term. One of the things, um, I understand that, that some of the machine learning techniques are basically just not explainable. It's simply not possible to to give a reasoned account of how a particular decision was arrived at. And in some discussions that I've had, some people say, depending upon the importance of the application, there are some no-go zones that we should, we simply, there are some areas that we should not use those kinds of machine learning techniques to generate decisions. That we And, and we will sacrifice some values, we may sacrifice, it may be an inferior technique to use a decision tree that is, there's more readily explainable. But these are the kind of trade-offs that we were talking about yesterday. And my personal view is sometimes you have to sacrifice a bit of accuracy for the demand for explainability. And those 